Hello, and welcome to Virtual VBS. I am Rosemarie Eisner Raja, Director of Children's and Family Ministry at First Press Berkeley. And I'm at First Press Berkeley right now. But you are not. Usually we gather all together for VBS in this place. But we can't this year. Just because we can't meet here, does that mean we have to stop VBS? No. Just because we can't come to church right now, does that mean we have to stop worshiping God? Of course not. Just because we can't gather together, does that mean that we can't do things together, things that are important? No. We just have to figure out how to do things differently. So this week we are doing things differently. Some things and some people will be the same, but the ways that we are doing things are different. And that's what we have to do. When we are in different circumstances, we have to figure out how to do things differently. But you know what? As many things change, as much as things may feel different, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God's call on our life is the same wherever we are and whatever we are doing. God calls us to worship God wherever we are. And so that is what we will be doing. All week we will be telling stories. Different people will be telling stories each day about the people of God in different circumstances, sometimes scary circumstances and we find that God is with them wherever they are, wherever we are in the world. God is with us. Wherever we are in our lives, God is with us. I am going to start by telling you a story about a time when the people of God had to go somewhere new, had to leave the things and the people and the places that were familiar to them and step out. It wasn't a choice they wanted to make. It was something they had to do. Are you ready for this first story? Do you know how to get ready to hear a story from the Bible? You can get comfortable in your body, sit in a way that's comfortable for you. I like to take a deep breath to help me feel comfortable all through my body, to help me to feel ready. And we always like to ask God's blessing on our time. God, we are so grateful that you are with us. Speak to us today, we would pray. We are here to worship you. It's in the name of our risen Lord Jesus Christ that we pray. Amen. I have something here to help me tell this story. Do you know what it is? This is the desert. So many important things happen to the people of God in the desert, that we need to have a piece of it here to help us tell our story. Listen to the desert. What does the desert sound like? would it be like to be in the desert? The 
the desert is a strange and dangerous place. During the day, the sun is hot and the sand stings your skin and can get into your eyes. At night, it's cold in the desert. When the wind blows, the shape of the desert changes. And the sand can get in your eyes. It can be hard to see where you're going. Hard to know where you are. There is almost no food or water in the desert. The desert is a strange and dangerous place. People don't go there unless they have a good reason, or unless they have to. This is Jerusalem. This is the wall around the city. And this is the temple. These are the people of God. of God believe that the wall around the city would protect them from anything. They also love to pray at the temple, a place where they could come so close to God and God would come so close to them that they would feel God's presence. They knew that God's presence was in the temple, but they believed that God's presence was only in the temple. And that was the only place that you could pray. God in Jerusalem thought that nothing could hurt them if they were inside the wall. But then the Assyrians came and attacked Jerusalem. The people fought. It was very hard. They were running out of food. What would they do? But then the Assyrians left. And then the Babylonians came and they attacked Jerusalem. The king of Babylon wanted Jerusalem for himself. They destroyed the walls and they burned the temple. And people couldn't believe it. How could this happen? And the soldiers made the people leave Jerusalem. marched them out of the city. And into the desert. The 
They didn't want to go. They looked back at the city in flames, the temple burning. Would they ever see it again? Could they ever go back to the way their lives were? Only a few people were allowed to remain in the city. Everyone else had to go. They had to go where the soldiers told them to go. When the soldiers said march, they had to march. When the soldiers said stop, they had to stop. They had to sleep when the soldier said, eat when the soldier said. They couldn't decide on their own. They had to go farther and farther into the desert. It was really hard. It was a long way. Some people even died. And still they went on. People missed the way things were. They missed the people they couldn't see. They missed Jerusalem. They hung their harps in the weeping willow trees and sang sad songs. They dreamed of Jerusalem and the way their lives used to be. When they prayed, they faced Jerusalem. And then they realized something. Slowly, but surely, they knew that even though they were so far away, God was with them. God wasn't just far, far away. God was with them every step and where they were now. They would gather to pray and read the scriptures and tell the stories of God's faithfulness to their children. And they came so close to God and God came so close to them that they felt God's presence, even so far away in a different place. The people of God settled in Babylon. How surprising. The king there let them work. Some of them opened shops. Some of them even worked for the king. And they began to make their lives there, doing things differently and worshiping God. It was a big surprise when the king of Persia came and attacked Babylon and took it for himself. During all this time, the people of God had been in exile. They couldn't go back to the way things were. But the new king decided that some people could go back. And so some of them left and began the long journey. They went with Ezra. Back through the desert to the places they had been.
traveled back through the desert. And it was really hard. It took a long time. They came back to Jerusalem. And they began to rebuild the temple. And then some more people left. Nehemiah led this time. They had a long journey to. They were excited to get back. And they began to rebuild the wall around Jerusalem. The people weren't in exile anymore. They could come and go. But some of the people decided to stay. They stayed on in this new and different place. They knew that God was with them. Wherever they went, God was there. And they would worship God and feel God's presence. part of this story you like the best. Do you have a favorite part? I wonder which part of this story is the most important. What is the most important part of this story? What do you think is most important? I wonder where you are in this story, or what tells something about you? if there is a part of this story that we could take out but still have all the story that we need. Is there anything we can take away? I hope you enjoyed this story. It's called The Exile and Return. And it's from Godly Play, Volume 2, by Jerome Berryman. And a lot of different books of the Bible went into this story. You can find this story in 2 Kings 25, 2 Chronicles 36, 13 to 23, and the books of Ezra and Nehemiah. Virtual Godly Play will be back tomorrow with another story and new people telling you about the people of God in different circumstances. So I hope you will join us then. And there are other things to do for virtual VBS today. I am going to pray for us and ask God's blessing. God, thank you for being with us wherever we are. We can feel your love and we know that you want us to share it with everyone everywhere. Thank you for loving us so much. Show us the work that we have to do that's according to your will, wherever we are and wherever you call us to be. 
It's in your name we pray, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. See you soon.